Indoor Dynamic Movement with Maria Antonescu. Massageandmovement.org. Hello. <laughs> I'm Maria Antonescu. And I'm here today to help bring um, inspiration for movement in our homes. We're in our homes a lot right now. And there are so many ways we can move. Um, right now, our culture tends to think about exercise as how we get our the moves that we need to in our life. But exercise is like, you know, maybe half an hour a day, and that's great. But what are we doing with the whole rest of the day? I'm here to give you ideas of what to do. First off, why don't you just stop and feel where your body is right now while you watch this, whether you're standing, whether you're sitting, because it's probably a posture that you're in a lot. Maybe you t you're leaning on something and outsourcing your movement to the wall or a chair. Maybe you're standing, but you're in kind of a funky position. And then let's take wherever we are and bring everything more midline. So for me, my hip is out. My muscles aren't really holding me up. I'm more in my ligaments. I'm going to bring everything more centered. I have two legs. I'm going to use them both. And once we're centered, whether you're standing or sitting, just notice where your weight is, especially if you're standing. Is your weight more forward on your toes, which means your pelvis is thrusting forward? If so, go ahead and bring that back and bring the weight over the heels. When we bring it back, we're not bringing our chest and torso back too. Just think about bringing your butt back. Um, what this does is it helps get our muscles holding us up. When we're out in this posture, we have a lot more downward pressure. So anything like varicose veins, pubic symphysis pain, um, prolapse issues can be exacerbated by this. So we bring our weight back over our heels so our toes are easily wiggleable. And that's just something you can start to notice on your own. Oh, what's my usual posture? And then maybe try to mimic it on the other side and it'll feel really weird. And then sometimes try to bring it center and it'll just use different parts of your body. Another thing we like to do is keep some things high and some things low. That way we're using our shoulders more. And when I reach up high, I try not to bring my ribs up. I try to keep them down. And this helps keep the movement in my shoulder instead of actually in my spine, if you can see the difference there. And possibly when you're reaching up for something, you do need to get higher and you might need to thrust your ribs a little bit, or you might need to get up on your toes, and that's fine. But we just try to get as much shoulder movement as we can first. And that will help in the long run get us more mobility in our tight, tight shoulders. Another thing is keeping things low so that we can think about how do we get things that are low down. Do we curl our back when we come down and if we stay down too long is our back really sore? Can we hinge at our hips and just go as far as our pelvis can go and then reach things from here? After that we could bring our hips back to get down lower. Once we're down or getting down do you just plop down, or can you get down slowly and controlled? And once you're down, you can be in different positions. Um, it's all about just moving our bodies differently instead of the same way over and over and over. One thing that changes how our bodies move are our shoes. And in our house, we do all minimal shoes. That means no positive heel. So these shoes are flat. This shoe does have a little bit of a curl on the toe. Um, it's really hard to find shoes without that, but ideally we'd find a shoe that's all the way flat. We like shoes that are flexible, shoes that are wide enough for our toe box, and shoes that attach to our foot. If we're wearing a shoe that doesn't attach to our foot, every time we take a step, our toes will kind of curl to help hold the shoe on and that causes a lot of tension and the upper foot 
and the um, lower leg. In fact, it's really common in the winter for people to come to me and be like, I'm so sore right here. And kids, kids with really clunky winter boots get really sore in here because a lot of times the boot doesn't actually attach to the leg. It's pretty wide open. And then every time they step, they have to grip with their toes. So um, ideally things are attached to our foot so we don't have to grip. And in this video, I'm gonna be giving you a lot of ideas and a lot of inspiration. So pick one or two. See if you can bring a couple things into your life. It does, I don't want this to be overwhelming. I want this to be inspiring. So figure out what works for you and your family and start bringing that in. So come on in here. We tend to keep a lot of props around because if our props were put away, I would have to go get them and bring them out to use them. And I'm just not going to do that. But if they're already lying around, I can just go calf stretch while I'm walking somewhere else. We like to keep a lot of texture around too. Um, texture helps with foot mobility. We don't get a lot of texture in our lives because most of our environment is hard, flat, and level. So this is still pretty level, but it's, um, it has more texture to it. So it gives my feet a different input, which actually affects my whole body. It's pretty amazing. When people have knee pain, um, getting on more texture sometimes can take care of it in a very short amount of time. I want to throw out foam rollers are really fun. I like foam rolling and um, kids have a good time balancing on top of them. We have a lot of obstacles in our living room which offer us great um, variety of how we're going to get under something or over or through. And I think one of the keys with this is changing it up periodically to keep the kids interested. They made this configuration. So, and I realize not everybody has monkey bars in their living room, but surely you could come up with something. Something fun. We have a stand-up work desk, which we keep texture at, so when we're standing up to work, we can also be getting texture. We can be calf stretching while, while we're here. Ideally, we're not leaning forward and keeping our weight forward on our pelvis and then outsourcing it to the computer. This is really hard on the lower back and we don't use our muscles as much. So being here, keeping our weight back over our heels. And ideally, we're not doing this. <laughs> so we can... Um, it's like we have a ponytail that someone's pulling back and up to the corner of the ceiling behind us and it's called head ramping and then work from here. If you follow me over here, <laughs> um, this is representing a dynamic workstation. So we have standing, we also have a seated. When we have a seated work desk, laptops are really handy because you can move them around. So you don't always have to be forward looking at your computer. You can have it at different heights. You can have it at different angles. Um, we can read also in all these different positions that I'm giving you for laptop usage. When we sit, it's good to sit up on something because most people, we don't have the hamstring length to sit on the floor without tucking our tailbone. So a lot of us, when we sit, we tend to tuck because we're tight and the hamstrings are pulling us this under. Ideally, when we sit, our pelvis is neutral. So the ASIS, these bony markings here are on the same plane as the pubic symphysis. 
So if I were to put this up against a wall, these three points would hit at the same time. If we're sitting tucked, our sacrum gets pushed in and our pelvic floor muscles get shortened or there's slack in them. Our organs have more pressure on top of them and our organs no longer have the pubic shelf that kind of helps support them to stay where they are. They can, the organs can start to kind of sliding down lower than we'd like them to. So ideally, um, a neutral pelvis. So you can sit up on a stack of pillows. This is a dome. Um, there are yoga blocks you could sit on. Really just make it up as you go and then keep changing. You could sit with your legs out to get a nice adductor stretch. Typing. <laughs> when we're folding laundry, which is something a lot of us do, we could use this as a time to get more movement. Maybe you can help show moves, Olive. Um, you could be in a nice lunge. You could be seated like we are doing with our laptop. You could be doing a hip hinge or a squat to get up and down. We could even play with our laundry. We get some nice shoulder movement. <laughs> and you can even play games with your kids where you pass things from behind you to each other and then they <laughs> pass it around. Excellent. But just, you know, keeping it fun, keeping it interesting. When carrying a laundry basket or a baby, start to note, do you pop your hip out to the side to carry it? If so, bring that back in. Use more of your muscles to do it. You tend to lean forward like you're creating a shelf and this is resting upon the shelf. If so, bring those hips back, weight over the heels. And again, we're using more of our muscles, more of our body to do this. I'd like to show you a couple more things. So, a lot of people like warm beverages in the morning. When we have convenience items like tea bags, instant coffee, um, that convenience basically means some of our movement we don't have to do anymore. We're outsourcing it. Someone else is putting the tea in the tea bags and all we have to do is take the tea bag and put it in the cup. So what we could do is bring our movement back to us. We could make our own tea. You could even grow your own herbs and make your own tea. Or you could buy tea and then put it in a tea uh, bindle. You could keep your tea really high, your tea ball really low, your cup in the middle, so you're getting variety. Another option is, like Olive is doing, grinding coffee. <laughs> and it takes a bit of work to hold this grinder. You could also sit down and have it between your legs and then you're getting some leg work to hold it. Grinding your own salt is great. Um, also with a cutting board, they are mobile. So you can use them at different levels. You could also bring it to the floor. Something I like to do in the summer is bring the cutting board with the food outside so I can get sunlight, air, movement, all at the same time, plus be getting dinner ready. So one last thing I want to show you is behind the camera person. Just got to switch spots. Sweeping. Something else that we probably all do. We can keep sweeping fun by putting on some music, dancing with your broom. You could play a game where you keep your feet still and then try to sweep as far around you as you can without moving. You could get up on one leg and balance and sweep. Just keeping it really fun and playful. 
if you have the little broom and dust pan, you could just get down and sweep as well. It might be something that your kids like to do, little broom and dust pan. Well, anyway, those are the ideas that I have for you. I hope you found some inspiration and that you get out, start dynamically moving. Thank you.